Psalm 32. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Selah. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Selah. Therefore let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. Selah. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Psalm 33 Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with a lyre. Make melody to him with a harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth all their host. He gathers the waters of the sea as a heap. He puts the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the children of man. From where he sits enthroned, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth, he who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. The king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a false hope for salvation, and by its great might it cannot rescue. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love that he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield for our heart is glad in Him, because we trust in His holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Welcome to Bible Time. Today is Psalm 32 and Psalm 33. In Psalm 32, David starts with the main idea of this psalm in verses 1 and 2. Blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven. Blessed are the one the Lord has nothing against him. And when God forgives, He forgives completely. This is the main idea. This is the main point. You are blessed because God wants us to have our sins forgiven when we uncover and when we confess our sin. And I believe that David was speaking through his personal experience. However, you will be miserable if you stay silent. And that's verse 3 and 5. And what we find is that your sin and your shame and your guilt will damage your mind and your physical body and that God would chase after you and He's going to deal with your sin. So your relationship and your fellowship with God will stop growing until you deal with God. So David did that and he did didn't come to God right away and his life was miserable but when he did uncover his sin when he confessed his sin he was freely forgiven now the rest of the chapter what we find is because David experienced his freedom and liberation when he came to God he found his grace and he found forgiveness and his love when we come to him so the rest of the verse david encouraged others to seek the lord and for he deals graciously and with the sinner and he's truly our hiding place he he is our refuge and you will be blessed when you know that your sins are completely forgiven as david is encouraging others 
Now Psalm 33, we find David praising God. Verses 1 through 3, he speaks about how it is fitting for the people who believe in God to praise Him. It becomes a natural thing. It's not something you, you are forced to do. This comes natural. We want to do this. We want to praise Him with a new song, with all kinds of instruments, with the best of talents to present to Him. Why? Because He is worthy of our praise. And verses 4 through 19, what we find, the reason why we need to praise Him is because who God is. We have to praise Him because His character, and that is that God is dependable, God is reliable, and He's faithful. His love never fails. He has unfailing love for each and every one of us. Second thing is that He is powerful. He created all things to existence by a simple word that He speaks. So we see the powerfulness of God. And third thing is that because He is righteous, and that's who God is, Lord sees our heart to those who seek and fear Him, and those who depend on Him, those who rely upon Him. And those who rely on their own strength will not endure. In conclusion, David encouraged to wait on the Lord, for He is our help and our shield. Our heart is glad in Him because we trust His holy name. Now this psalm is about worship, and we have misunderstanding about what worship is. We think worship is a song, and so when they have a great praise team, and when the great music play, and it's very good musically, and, and then we get emotionally kind of attached to it, and we think that's a worship. It could be, but it also cannot be. Uh, worship, we think it's going to be done at church, or the worship cannot be done in the church. What am I talking about? You see, we have a misunderstanding what worship is. What worship is, is worship is offering yourself to the Lord. So, when we sing a song, doesn't mean that you're really worshiping. You're singing a song that has a lot of emotional attachment. But if you do not offer yourself in a song, then it doesn't help. So, songs and the music is to help you to offer yourself to the Lord, but music itself cannot be worship. And worship could be done at church or cannot be done in church. To say that worship is not about a location, it's about offering yourself to the Lord. It could be done at church okay, or it cannot be done at church if you do not offer yourself. For Jesus said, time is coming that we will worship God in spirit and in truth. And the way that we worship God is to really offer yourself to the Lord. If you do not offer yourself to the Lord, then you are not worshiping the Lord. So that is what true worship is. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We pray that we would truly offer ourselves to you when we worship you. And that's the only worship that is acceptable to you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.